even think there's a slight suspicion that it's true when you, excuse me, when you look at Stormy Daniels. Uh, I know Donald Trump and Let's look, respect at his, him. look at his three wives, right? Beautiful women, classy women, women of great substance. Stormy Daniels. Donald Trump's TV lawyer is using his client's trademark strategy for undermining women who accuse him of inappropriate behavior. Attack their looks. In this case, Giuliani, who announced his divorce from wife number two while dating soon-to-be ex-wife number three, was referring to adult film star Stormy Daniels. Giuliani went on to say that he has no respect for porn stars, prompting this response from Trump on Friday. Rudy's great, but Rudy is Rudy. But Rudy is doing a very good job, actually. Doing a very good job. He said what? I'm not going to disagree with him on that. Jo joining me now is Jill Weinbanks, former assistant Watergate special prosecutor, Lisa Bloom, civil rights attorney with the Bloom firm, and Michael Avenatti, attorney for Stormy Daniels. And Michael, I'm going to go to you first because it was your client who was being uh, disparaged. Um, Yashar Ali, uh, had a uh, journalist, um, had a, a tweet that he did uh, back on May 30th that uh, showed the Trump vodka launch party uh, on Jan in January of 2007. And at that party were, were Kim Kardashian, your client, and Donald Trump. So obviously Donald Trump had certain amount of respect for your client at one point um, because he obviously had um, in your you know in her allegation of sexual liaison with her um, he's been known to you know hang around or hang out with women who were even with his daughter there's another picture here and this is from CNN this was an apprentice release party for Playboy Mansion um, at the Playboy Mansion so he you know he's he hangs around a lot of different kinds of women so maybe he has more respect for women who you know have various professions than Giuliani d does but what did you make of, uh, of Rudy's Rudy Giuliani's uh, tactic of attacking your client. Well, Joy, I find the tactic to be disgusting. I find the comments to be disgusting. And I find Mr. Trump's support of Mr. Giuliani yesterday to be even more disgusting. You know, if this was a Fortune 500 company, uh, Mr. Giuliani would have been immediately fired uh, as general counsel or outside counsel to the company. And the CEO certainly would not have appeared on television in support of these outrageous comments. You know, Mr. Trump. Trump hasn't uh, seemed to have a problem over the years having sex with adult film stars. Uh, he seems to like them in his bed. Uh, so, you know, it's ironic to me that now uh, this man would, would come out and basically state that because my client is an adult film star, uh, that she doesn't de deserve respect uh, and that she's not credible. I mean, this is outrageous. And every woman and man in the United States should be outraged by these comments and this behavior and the fact that Rudy Giuliani has not been fired yet is a disgrace. Yeah, you know, you know, I have to come to the table just for a moment, Lisa, because, you know, you represent a lot of women um, who are, you know, stepping forward to make claims, you know, against powerful men and then having their lives kind of shredded and scrutinized and their choices, their career choices, their life choices um, scrutinized. It, it, it is ironic. I mean, Donald Trump was in a soft core porn film, <laughs> right? Right? He, right. He, was, he was in it. Yes. Um, but, but, and, and no one is, is supposed to criticize him, right, for that. But the, these women who are stepping forward are taking a huge risk of, of reputational attack. Well, and, you know, I'm just so appreciative of Mr. Giuliani that he tells us silly girls, you know, what our sexual choices should be, what our career choices should be. I mean, this is so offensive, the mansplaining, but you're right. What's really going on here is they're trying to deter other women right. from coming out because they're trying to send a message, you will be shamed, you will be demeaned by Rudy Giuliani or by Trump himself. That's what's really going on here. And I salute Stormy Daniels and Michael Avenatti for having none of it and for continuing to persevere in the face of these attacks. Yeah, I mean, Jill, you know, Donald Trump, you know, has always been sort of in, in the past before he was a political figure is somebody who was, had the opposite sort of attitude. He wasn't this sort of judgmental uh, person towards women's choices. He literally felt uh, it appropriate to have his wife and his daughter at the same party with uh, Karen McDougal, with whom he later had an affair. We don't know what the timeline was, but he felt fine being in that, that, those environments with his, with his daughter present. But now these women are, you know, now you have Stormy Dan who he allegedly had an affair with being disparaged 
for doing it, it, it really does seem quite it's, hypocritical. Well, it is hypocritical, and hypocrisy seems to be a very big part of what Donald Trump is and Giuliani. I mean, Giuliani had an affair before he got married to his second wife with whom he was having the affair, and then had an affair with his third wife before he was done with his second wife, and now he's divorced from his third wife. The hypocrisy of attacking women, and I will say this, Michael Avenatti and Stormy Daniels look so much better than Donald Trump and his lawyer. She has credibility in my mind, and I'm proud of her for being willing to do this. So many women are not willing to bring rape charges or to bring harassment charges because it will ruin their careers, right. it will ruin their reputation, it will hurt them, and being attacked like this is just not fair. It's got to be difficult, but she, ha she has, you know, because she is not willing to be shamed, really. Yes. She's, She's been proud able of herself. Yes. She's so comfortable in her own skin, yeah. and that is something to be really proud of. Absolutely. Um, and, and so let me come back to you, uh, Michael, because I think the more relevant case, uh, point here is whether or not she was well represented the first time around when she made that deal um, to be silent about her alleged affair with Donald Trump. Uh, there's now a new lawsuit that has been filed um, that you're, you're, you guys are filing against the former attorney, um, Keith Davidson, who made that deal, um, who, is, who your side is saying was elect, elected to be a puppet for Michael Cohen and Donald Trump in order to advance their interests at the expense. Uh, of Stephanie Clifford, which is Stormy Daniels' real name, they've now countersued um, for defamation. Keith Davidson has, has sued you uh, uh, they've, and, and Stormy Daniels and Michael Cohen. Your thoughts? Well, Keith Davidson is an absolute scumbag, and he's a disgrace to the profession of law, and I think when this case is all said and done, he's going to be disbarred, and rightfully so. You know, we still don't have all of his documents and the text messages between him and Michael Cohen. It's clear to us they were conspiring in March and April of this year uh, against my client, which, as Lisa will tell you, a, a, an attorney, even a discharged attorney, should never be working uh, against that attorney's uh, former client. But I want to go back to what we were talking about moments ago because I think this is a very important point, Joy. You know, when Donald Trump was trying to get in the pants of my client, he didn't tell my client that he disrespected her or that she wasn't credible or she wasn't intelligent. You know, when Mr. Trump was trying to get in the pants of Ms. McDougal, he didn't tell her that he disrespected her, that she wasn't intelligent, that she wasn't entitled to credibility. The hypocrisy here is unbelievable. And let me tell you what I'd like to know this morning. I'd like to know the last time Mr. Giuliani viewed pornography. Oh. Something tells me it wasn't years or decades ago. So if there's anyone in the United States that could help me answer that question, <laughs> please provide that information to me because I'd like to make it known. Yeah, it, there, there's a lot of hypocrisy going on, a lot of mansplaining going on. Um, Summer Zervos is going to, I'm sticking with you for a second, Michael, um, have the opportunity to depose Donald Trump, and she was the former Apprentice contestant who said that Donald Trump kissed and groped her uh, after she appeared on her show and kissed and groped her, obviously, against her will. Um, she will get that deposition. Do you believe that with this new uh, lawsuit, uh, you know, alleging that, you know, Donald Trump, that the deal made with Donald Trump was made um, with the lawyer's collusion, does that op uh, provide, an, afford an additional opportunity for you to get to depose Donald Trump? I, I think it does in light of the allegations in our complaint and in light of the allegations relating to what Mr. Trump knew earlier this year and what he knew about the effort to uh, silence my client. One way or the other, Joy, I'm going to get a chance to depose this president and ask the tough questions and I'm going to actually demand and get answers. Lisa, let, let me ask you about that because you have now um, Keith Davidson who is involved in multiple instances of, of doing these NDAs. They seem to be cookie cutter NDAs for these women. They don't seem quite fair favorable to the women. How strong is the case that he was colluding essentially with Michael Cohen? Well, I don't know all of the evidence. I don't know what the text messages are. I have seen what's been made public, which is the agreement itself. I don't know whether, for example, this cookie cutter agreement, did that come from Cohen? Did that come from Keith Davidson? I mean, these do tend to be templates. In this case, it's very unusual with the, the PP and the DD, David right? Dennison, and David yeah. Dennison and Peggy Peterson, and that is unusual. So, you know, I just don't know enough. We don't have enough evidence 
evidence yet for me yeah. to make that determination. Yeah, and, and but it, from a standpoint of, of, of you know legal ethics, yes. if a, if a if a client comes to an attorney, and multiple clients come to this attorney, and they the same result keeps happening, meaning that the woman has to be quiet. Yes, she gets a certain amount of money. Well, I'll tell you something. Uh, until about six months ago, almost all of these things ended with NDAs and women being silenced sure. and being paid an amount of money. And yeah. I've done a lot of work in the last few months to get deals without NDAs. And I've had to push very hard and I've gotten some of them. But merely that there's an NDA I don't think is sufficient. Now, yeah. if he is colluding, if there's text messages to show that, especially after he got out of the case, and if he hasn't turned over the file, as Michael Avenatti says, that's clearly an ethical violation. We have an obligation to do that. Yeah, and that's what you're going to be looking for, I'm assuming, Michael, is, is, is that you know, evidence of communication between Michael Cohen and uh, Mr. Mr. Davidson. Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, after Mr. Davidson no longer represented my client, he should not have been having any communications with Michael Cohen about my client, and yet we know um, that he has, and we've de been demanding these text messages for months, repeatedly, four, five, six times, and they refuse to provide the text messages uh, because they know they are very, very damaging, and we're going to get our hands on them sooner rather than later. Yeah, and so, Jill, you know, I, it, what's, what's sort of fascinating here is the way in which the Stormy Daniels case has kind of dovetailed or sort of run into the, the, the Robert Mueller case. How, how, how is that, I mean, how does this case ultimately reflect on, on, on the bigger Russiagate case? Well, I think it's all part of the kind of people that Donald Trump surrounds himself with. You have Cohen at the center of this, who is his lawyer, and not an ethical great lawyer, who is the one who supposedly wrote these NDAs, which all included things about paternity. Well, Michael Avenatti has denied that there is any paternity issue involved in Stormy Daniels. Why is it in there? Yeah. Because he was too lazy to take it out. And her lawyer, Keith Davidson, didn't even think to take it out. Right. So there's a lot of bad things based on he has Giuliani now as his lawyer. This is not doing him any good yeah. in any respect. And his attack on Stormy, his as praise of Melania, who says, I never talked to him about this. Why is he speaking for me? Right. So this is not helping Donald Trump at all. Yeah, and, and you do have also this sense, Lisa, in which, you know, everyone, we talked early in the uh, last hour about how sort of everyone is implicated. The entire Republican Party is recruited into the way that Donald Trump speaks, the way that he, you know, his policy ideas, even if they don't agree with them, everyone's recruited. Mm -hmm. you, you now have people sort of using Donald Trump's tactic of pushing back against these women. Uh, there's a piece of sound here from uh, October of 2016, uh, there was a People magazine writer um, named Natasha Stoinoff who alleged Trump pushed her against the wall, tried to force his tongue down her mouth, uh, down her throat, and physically attacked her during a tour uh, at Mar-a-Lago in 2005. This is how Trump reacted. She said I made inappropriate advances. And by the way, the area was a public area, people all over the place. Take a look. You take a look. Look at her, look at her words, you tell me what you think. I don't think so. I don't think so. You know, take a look at her. Yeah. I don't think so. It's so offensive that all matter that matters about a woman is what she looks like. That you have to reach a certain level of attractiveness for Trump to sexually harass or grope you. I mean, it's so offensive. But that's the mindset of these guys. That's how we get judged. Our appearance. That's all that matters. And by the way, Stormy Daniels is a career woman. Stormy Daniels is fully in control of her career, her yeah. acting, her directing, yeah. her producing. Who is more in control of her professional life than Stormy Daniels? Yeah, indeed, and very smart. I mean, if you listen to her, her. <laughs> Great communication skills because yeah. she's out there battling trolls and everything on Twitter <laughs> and as well. 18 women who also accused him. There are many professional women. Absolutely, yes. yeah. Four of whom I represented, and they are still standing right. strong. And one of whom just won a, a elected office, or she at least won, yeah, won exactly. a primary. Exactly. Michael, last question to you: Where is this going from here? Um, this battles back and forth, obviously, with uh, with Ms. Daniels' former attorney. That's happening. You still have these active cases involving Michael Cohen. Give us a preview. What, where, where does this go from here? Well, Joy, we're going to continue to march forward and we're going to acquire the evidence and the facts and the documents um, to show exactly what happened here. And we're going to disclose that to the American people so they can make a, their own judgment as to what happened. And, you know, this isn't about the sex. It's about the uh, it's about the cover up that took place uh, at the hands of Mr. Trump and Mr. Cohen. And look, I want to go back to something because I think this is really important. 
Mr. Trump hired Mr. Cohen and used him for over a decade as his personal attorney. If that doesn't reflect a tremendous lack of judgment, I don't know what does. Mr. Trump then turned around and hired most recently Mr. Giuliani to represent him and has now doubled down on his comments. If that doesn't reflect an absolute lack of judgment, I don't know what does. I mean, this president has no judgment when it comes to picking people. He promised the best in the brightest <laughs> brightest and we got these two guys <laughs> well your your client did, did, did quite a good job of finding somebody who could represent her and you're uh, obviously doing so very ably jill weinbank thank stick you. around lisa bloom michael avenatti thank you both have a wonderful weekend thank you thank, thank you, you. And up next